Well, good afternoon, everybody. Like Karen said, my name my name is Diane Moon, and I have been working at um, waste management now for almost two years. Um, I used to work at the zoo, just like Karen, for about 18 years, and I was an educa education coordinator there. Um, so we're going to talk about compost 101. What is composting? Um, raise your hand if you know what composting is. Oh, just kidding. Um, composting is the controlled decomposition of food waste and yard waste, whether it's at home, at work, at school. It, it's what happens to your organic waste um, when it rots. Now, it doesn't do it on its own. To get compost, it just doesn't happen. You have to have things um, like microorganisms, lovely bacteria and fungus, little protozoans and amoebas um, that break down the dead food waste into smaller pieces, and that's called compost. Not only that, but you have to have heat to make compost because those little microorganisms love it when it is warm, even hot. Um, and you also have to have water. Those little things have to have um, be hydrated in order to chew up and make that um, food waste into little tiny pieces of compost. Now, why why compost? Well, Diane, real oh, quick, do you have slides going? Because I still see yes. it. Yes, I'm so sorry. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. There we go. So why compost? Well, compost releases nutrients in the soil for plants to grow. Compost is natural. Compost happens in the forest. Compost happens in your yard and your lawn. All right. So here we go. So why compost? Well, it's just not for compost. Here in Louisville, we trash 85,000 tons of food into the landfill every year. So in Louisville, 85,000 tons. So remember, a ton is 2,000 pounds. So you multiply that by 2,000 pounds, and I mean 2,000, and that's how many pounds. If you want something that you can really um, understand a little bit better, that's a lot of food waste into the landfill. And nothing happens to that food waste in the landfill. The only thing it does, unfortunately, is make greenhouse gases. And it just um, maybe might make some leachate that is not terribly healthy. Um, so it just kind of sits there. So it's actually a waste of a resource when we can make something helpful for ourselves, like compost. Twenty, it says, out of everything we put in our local landfill, twenty six percent could have been composted. Man, and that's um, food waste, yard waste, um, wood that's not been painted. All of that can be composted. I want to take a look at this graph. This is kind of an eye opener too. the top 10 materials. Now, this came from a um, waste study a few years ago. Food waste is the number one top material that goes into the um, that, that let's see, tell me we measure single pit, that is um, in the waste stream. <laughs> And then the other thing is textiles like clothes, which is a shame too, because um, those things could be recycled as well. Okay, so the first thing when you think about your waste stream, before we even talk about compost, is to reduce. Don't have so much stuff in your waste stream. And in order to do that, maybe you need not to bag your grass clippings, you need to mulch leaves and um, start composting that leftover grass that sits on your lawn. Now that 
leftover grass that sits on your lawn, so long as you're not cutting it super long, it's not going to hurt your grass. Absolutely helps your grass. Or you can rake it up and put it in your composter, which makes a great um, additive for composting. You just have to be a little careful that you don't put too much in, or it could burn because it gets super hot. It could burn when it decomposes, it gets a little hot. It could burn those little uh, microorganisms. So maybe we shouldn't waste as much food as we should. should we, maybe we shouldn't waste as much food as we do. Um, I know at my house, we waste a lot of food, but I do feel a little bit better about it because I try and compost as much as possible. At least it's going back and I can reuse it in my garden or I can at least have it um, feed other organisms and have it break down. But reducing food waste is probably, reducing your food and wasting that is probably the best thing is um, just to be organized, know what's in, the, in your shelves. Are you gonna eat a whole bag of apples or should you just get two apples and then you know you're going back to the grocery? Um, Maybe we don't have to um, have our refrigerators full of fresh produce when we know that in a couple of days uh, it's probably not going to last and we just have to throw it away. And if that happens, the best thing to do is put it in your compost. Now, here's some of you might have a, an idea of composting and composting. There's industrial composting and backyard composting, which are two totally different things. Industrial composting, if you look at that lovely picture of that huge pile of compost, all of that good stuff is in there. All those microorganisms are in there. Everything, the sun hitting it, temperatures are high. Um, the moisture content is excellent. That industrial composting can actually break down things that you should not put in your backyard composting. Industrial composting can do pallets, untreated wood, can do um, bones and meat and dairy, but not in the backyard composting. Your composter only holds about 80 gallons. That's an earth machine right there, and that's the one we sell. We'll talk more about, about that later. But it doesn't get that hot. You don't mix it up that much. So you have to keep out some elements so that your composting will break down properly. All right, here we go. Why compost again? Reduce those greenhouse emissions. And I know some of you may say, well, compost makes greenhouse gases. My composter, I know, makes greenhouse gases. Well, not like it would in a landfill. It actually releases greenhouse gases a little bit slower and not quite as much. And you're actually putting those nutrients back in instead of wasting it. And of course, conserving that valuable space in the landfill. Landfills can only last for so long. You can only put so much trash and garbage in a landfill before there's no more land. So that's why I'm here is to help to conserve landfill space, to learn about how to divert our waste instead of just taking it straight to the landfill. What can we do instead of taking it to the landfill? Well, compost, you can use those food waste that you're using in your composter, that is yours. You can use that for a garden, for um, your plants around your house. Once it breaks down, that is yours. You are not buying it, you are making it. You bought that food, you might as well use it. Now, there are lots of different kinds of composters. It's not gonna matter what kind of composter you have. Some people 
like one composter. Some people like another composter, but it's not going to matter. That is Miss Karen's bin right there. I have one that looks just like it. Her little bin lives in her um, chicken yard. Mine is actually just in the backyard in the grass. Um, you can have an open bin like that little square um, wooden one. It looks like it's probably made out of pallets or something like that. If you have an open bin like that, you might be getting in some pests unless you stir it every day. It's up to you. There's the dual tumbler. It doesn't make very much. It's definitely not 80 gallons like the earth machine. All right. If you think composting is really disgusting, you don't, you think the smell is spooky, the mold freaks you out. You know, you can always call somebody to come and have a service at your house to pick up your compost. Here, um, Louisville Compost Co-op will actually bring you a bucket and you put all your compost in the bucket, a five gallon bucket. Now they will have some stipulations what you can put in there. Like you don't put in a whole watermelon or um, a turkey um, like you cooked for Thanksgiving, but there are some stipulations, even though it's um, it's an industrial kind of uh, composting, it still has its limitations. So what they do, there's some little red buckets and um, you fill up your bucket, somebody comes, picks up the bucket and leaves a new bucket either every week or every other week, depends how fast you fill that bucket up. They take it to their site, mix it up. They actually take volunteers um, to come, um, I think it's the weekends, um, to help mix up the compost. So if you need to um, have a little workout, um, mixing compost would be an excellent thing, mixing all that um, heavy duty compost at low compost. Um, but that would make it nice and easy, especially if you li live in an apartment or you, you just don't want the mess. Now, if you do want a composter, the best thing to do is to give it lots of space. Believe it or not, your composter has to breathe and it has to be able to get lots of water and oxygen. If it's crammed in next to a quarter or um, next to a building, it might get too hot. It might not get enough um, air and enough water. Um, and it has to be convenient for you to use. If you have uh, a big yard and you put it at the very end of your yard, are you going to go out there every day and dump your compost? Or are you going to go out there every other day? Um, you need to take care of your compost like a pet. It actually is a living thing. Um, you have to feed it, you have to water it, you have to make sure it's healthy. And um, if you don't, it's not going to break down that food waste and some of the smaller yard waste like leaves and twigs. I wouldn't put a huge branch in there, but leaves and twigs it's not going to break it down. You've got to make sure that it is um, has lots of space and that you are going to use it. All right, what should you put in your compost? Well, there in your home composter. Let's just talk about you should not put meat and bones in there. Um, do not put um, dog poop or cat poop. No animal manure from carnivores or good dog and cat or carnivores, even um, omnivores. Um, Disease plants and weeds, don't put that in there um, because they might, um, those diseases might like that same environment and spread some of those diseases like a black spot or. Um, other uh, things that might affect some of your other plants. Uh, grease, oil, and fat. Do not put like corn on the cob in there. If you don't clean off the cob, actually, um, 
it's no big deal just to um, in some hot water, wash off your corn on the cob, and then you can put it in there. Actually, you should probably break it up and it'll decompose even that much faster because it has so much more surface area for those microorganisms to get to. Um, no dairy products. Don't put in cereal or um, milk products or cheese. Fish and seafood, that one's kind of a, a no-brainer there. Um, the wax-coated cardboard that's on there, those microorganisms cannot chew through the wax coating, so that cardboard's just going to stay there. It's best to just use plain old cardboard, the same cardboard that we all have our packages from Amazon come in. The thing about that cardboard is, is that you should probably cut it up or rip it up into smaller pieces. And just like the disease plants, no weed seeds, no um, no uh, dandelions and things like that, because they are really going to go to town in that composter. So what should you put in there? Well, everything else. The good stuff like fruits and vegetables that are sitting in your refrigerator right now, just sort of turning into a, like a little um, veggie gel. I have a tomato in my refrigerator right now that is um, headed towards the composter. It's got this kind of little gel thing going on. Eggshells, any eggshells. Some people actually um, use a putter and mussel to grind up their eggshells. Some people do that for their worms too. They put them in the oven, heat them up, and then um, break down those eggshells. I don't, I put those, I wash my, wash my eggshells um, out with water, warm water, and then I put them in my compost uh, bucket on the kitchen counter and they go straight into the composter. And when I mix it up, they break. That's as easy as that. Tea bags. Now, when you do tea bags, don't do the tea bags that are made out of polyester. You have to use the tea bags that are made out of cotton or paper. Paper's the best, actually. Um, shredded paper, cardboard, nutshells, almost anything. Um, you can, oh, I like the one that's hair or fur. So if you cut your hair at home, you can put that in there, or you can sometimes leave it out for the birds in the springtime for them to make their nests. Um, you can put, Manure from a rabbit in there. If you have a pet rabbit, you can roll up those newspapers, rip them up at the composter, and put all of that lovely um, manure that your rabbit, who is an herbivore, made for you, and use that. Those good bacteria that is in the gut of a rabbit will help break down that composter and all your fruits and vegetables and yard trimmings and everything else that's in there. Um, other herbivores as well, things like guinea pigs. So long as you feed them fresh fruits and vegetables or hay or the diet from like a pet store, um, that's what they will eat and that's what they will give you as lovely um, manure. Let's see. Um, you can also, if you want to use rainwater, you can use water that you have used for um, that you have used to um, rinse your dishes or something like that with. I mean, if you're really hardcore, I've never done that. I if I would find it very difficult to carry buckets of water, but um, today I did use um, a sprinkling pan and full of water from my um, rain barrel and put in my composter. It was a little dry and it wasn't breaking down quite fast enough because those poor little microorganisms were getting kind of thirsty. So I gave them a couple of gallons of rain water and mixed it up a little bit. And I'll show you a video of that. And we kind of enjoyed that. Just be sure that you don't use animal poo, like from your cat and dog, that is not going to break down. Okay, this one is a really good one, um, especially in the summertime. If you think composting brings pests and you think it's disgusting to have teeny tiny little um, 
gnats or teeny tiny little fruit flies um, buzzing around. I'm not talking like a lot. I'm talking like one or two buzzing around your kitchen. You can always keep your kitchen scraps in the freezer, which is really handy. And when you put those um, scraps in your composter, the 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 action of freezing actually starts to break down the cell walls of that those fruits and vegetables, and so it makes it easier for those microorganisms to start munching on those lovely food scraps that were kept in the freezer. You don't have to even have a super nice um, little container. You could just keep it in an old Tupperware or an old cottage cheese container, anything like that. And when you have some compost, you just open up the freezer and plop it in. Don't put that um, hoggy toss ice cream in your composter. Let's see, remember, composting needs three things, water, oxygen, and heat, and those microorganisms. Water is so important. If you're composting, like mine was super dry today, if it is too dry, those microorganisms cannot eat properly and um, they cannot break down your composting. So what happens is um, you can have flies, you can have mice come in, they'll love to break down that stuff with the microorganisms can. It should only take a few days to start breaking down. Um, if you see it, Ms. Karen's composter there, um, it should only take just a few days to break that, to start breaking that down. And like we said, make that really nice, um, vegetable jelly that they really like to, those microorganisms like to uh, eat and make into compost. You have to have a balanced compost. And like I said, you gotta treat it just like a pet. Oops, is that right? Okay. Um, the best thing that you can do in order to keep a brown, um, but having a balance of greens and browns is important. It's not um, super important, but it does help those microorganisms so that they have a very balanced diet. Browns are anything that is not greens. I mean, that's exactly what it is. Cardboard is a brown. A brown. Um, let's see. Dead leaves are a brown. Green leaves are a green. Oh, you get it? So anything, fruits and vegetables are green. Anything like um, leaves, tea bags, coffee grounds, uh, newspaper, those are all browns. If you want to get scientific about it, you can actually call it carbon or nitrogen. Carbon are the brown things and nitrogen are the green things. So if you put in fresh grass clippings, that's a nitrogen, it's still green. But if you put in grass clippings that have all dried out and they're super light, then that would be a brown. Let's see, don't forget the oxygen. You gotta turn that um, composter. And you might think that is disgusting. I mean, look at that, Karen's working hard turning that composter. Is she getting all the way down to the bottom? No, those microorganisms don't have to have all of that all the way down to the bottom, but she is stirring it, putting all that fresh stuff further down so that it's more convenient for those microorganisms to uh, get to and get that oxygen because it starts to um, compress as the water gets in there and as you put more things in there and all that fruits and vegetables makes that gel. Um, all of that stuff kind of compresses and it helps the microorganisms uh, to for you to fluff it up. And um, those are that's one of the chickens. The other thing is heat. When those microorganisms start eating, um, they that the action of decay actually makes heat, but those microorganisms 
that are helping your food waste decay like it very hot. They like it up to about 120 to 170 degrees. That's their favorite temperatures. And that's one reason why the earth machine is black. So it will absorb the heat in the summertime when those microorganisms are, that population is at its greatest and they are just chewing up all of those lovely fruits and vegetables and any herbivore manure. They are just going to town. Now, if it were to get too hot, yes, it could um, be a serious situation. Although I've never, I can't imagine how hot it would, it would get. I took the temperature of mine and um, let's see, it was in February last year and I could actually watch it increase. That's the other thing. Um, in the winter time, your composter actually if I want to use the scientific word kind of loosely, it actually hibernates. Those microorganisms kind of go to the center where it's nice and warm, and they don't do a lot of eating. They kind of, um, and I'm using air quotes, um, hibernate during the winter time when the temperatures are cooler, when the sun is not as strong, when that inside of that composter is not getting all of the heat that it really likes. They actually kind of go to sleep. It doesn't mean that you can't keep putting your food waste in there, that you still need to tend it, but you just don't, don't expect to have compost by January. It takes them quite a while. It takes them um, all winter long. Um, or all spring, it takes them all spring to get all of that winter deposits of food, uh, food waste to get starting to break down. They really like it super warm. All right. And remember, this is your compost. This is your food. This food you couldn't use, or it was cores, or it was banana peels. It's stuff that we don't eat. Why shouldn't you use it? So here, Miss Karen is um, actually, that chicken is getting some of those microorganisms. She can, chickens can see little bugs moving around, which is really kind of cool. And she's pecking out some of those microorganisms, little beetles and things that live in there. Um, <laughs> and Karen is using, um, her compost for her um, vegetable garden. And you can see all that lovely, rich, dark um, compost. It's, it's not soil, it's not mulch, that's compost. So it is full of nutrients and um, bugs too for your chickens. Now, here's some questions that you might have. If you have any more questions, let me know if these don't um, help your um, help you out. Uh, should I chop my ingredients? You can. It's totally up to you. Um, like I said, those corn on the cob pots, you, you can chop those up. Just be super careful. Just um, you can chop those up. I know people who have worms um that actually use a blender to blend up food for their worms um i don't know if i would go that far but some people do you can make compost you can help those organisms if you want compost fast in six months in nine months then um you can cut up your food scraps and what if your food scraps are moldy well don't worry that is exactly what's going on in your composter in your yard. Mold is not always a bad thing if it's on a fruit or a vegetable. Let's see. Um, how often should you turn your composter? Um, like what Miss Karen was doing, the more you turn it, the more you add, um, make sure it's not dry, the more oxygen you can get in there, the happier those microorganisms are going to be, the more they're going to eat. So just like if you're just like a pet, if you're tending your pet and you're feeding it good stuff 
and you're making sure it has water, um, your pet is going to grow and grow, and your compost will grow and grow. Um, your compost will your compost is not going to grow like the blob or anything. It's just going to be uh, sped up and made into compost faster. Um, in the winter time, your uh, composter kind of goes to sleep. It still is composting, but at a very slow rate versus at, in the summer. Oh, a lot of people don't like to do composting because they think it smells. Um, when I opened up my composter today, there was no smell. Absolutely not. And I had just put some moldy, um, let's see, moldy potatoes and moldy bread in there just the other day, and it didn't smell at all. If it starts to smell, then you probably need to do a little bit of mixing. You need to um, get that aerator in there to help aerate and get that stuff that's on the top in the middle for those microorganisms. Some people think, excuse me, that compost will attract attract pests. It could if you are not um, putting that fresh stuff underneath, those animals will smell it and try and get into that fresh food. So you should mix it as often as you can. If you put a lot in there, mix it. That keeps those vectors from um, getting um, up and under the composting. You can also buy um, some fencing or some screen to help so that um, some of those pests that can chew very easily through things or make tunnels, that will help stop those animals. All right. Earth machines. This is what we sell here. <laughs> Ms. Karen, I almost said the zoo. This is what we sell here at Waste Management is an earth machine. And this is what you get. No, not just four pegs. But when you get your earth machine, make sure you match up all those arrows. You see all those arrows? Make sure that you put your screw pegs in. This is my composter. And I opened it up today to take a look at it. And there should be no volume. Oh, you don't need to hear all that. Now, some of you might go, oh my God, flies. Look at that. Yeah, there's flies in there. Of course there is. Is there a whole bunch? No, they flew away. I did notice my composter was super dry and I took that rain barrel water and I'm putting it in there. I didn't use sink water or hose water because of the chlorine um, and all some of those other um, chemicals that they use to uh, detoxify the water. So I used the rainwater. I discovered that my worms like it, so I figured that um, the microorganisms probably like it as well. Let's see here. Is that going to repeat? Oh, hang on. Oh, I wanted to show you. Um, I started my composting, what was it, last year? I'm not very good at turning it. As you can tell, it's not quite ready like Ms. Karen's. Oh, I wanted to show you my um, vermiculture, my worm bin. You can see I've got figs in there, potato peelings, and what's that, the lettuce, um, and uh, shredded paper. They love shredded paper. And I just read that um, pests don't like the shredded paper that helps keep them. But you can see those worms, it was, it was daylight. So worms are a little bit more active during the nighttime. Um, but you can see them in there moving around, doing their job, breaking down that food waste. Um, we can talk a lot about nature if you want to. But worm composting is one of my favorite things. Talk about having a pet. Um, worm composting uh, makes, in my opinion, compost pretty fast. All that dark earth, that is worm castings. Yes, it's worm poop. It's my, one of my favorite topics to talk about. Um, all of that stuff can be mixed in with your compost, or you can put it straight on your plants. Worm poop or worm castings does not burn. Your, your vegetables or your plants, but it is full of nutrients. And what I'm gonna do real quick, watch your eyeballs. 
um, composting versus worm. Oh, look at that picture. That's great. Oh, I made a worm tower last year. And um, out of the five gallon bucket I had, and it was pretty successful, except for this year, um, I got ants in there and that kind of freaked me out. Ants kind of freaked me out. So um, I'm trying to figure out what I need to do to stop the ants from living in there with my worms. Um, worms and ants don't really get along. Those are my worms um, moving along the top of my worm compost, um, my worm bed. Big red wigglers. Red wigglers are the best to use for a small compost for a small worm bin because they're small. Um, you can use any kind of worm, but red wigglers like to stay on the surface and they're smaller, but they eat. They're great eaters. Um, you can use big worms like um, fishing worms, like night crawlers, but they take up much more space. It's kind of like having a pony versus a crab horse. They just take up too much space. Those um, night crawlers like it way, way down. You do have to be careful that your worms don't get too cold or too hot. Um, rain barrels, another one of my favorite topic. And yes, we sell rain barrels here at um, Solid Waste. We sell that little cistern, and I always forget how many gallons it is. It is 55 gallons. It holds 55 gallons of it. Um, water that comes off your downspout, um, which is excellent. And you can see all sorts of different kinds of rain barrels. That green rain barrel is almost four hundred dollars. Um, I can't imagine spending four hundred dollars on a rain barrel. Um, ours is not quite that much, but rain barrels are very important. You can reuse that lovely water that's not um, that doesn't have those chemicals in it that your plants will not thank you for putting on them. They love to have fresh water and I know it's running down your tarp roof or whatever, but it's much better for them um, than the chlorine and other stuff um, that is in our drinking water. Let's see. Let me move to the story. There we go. This is my rain barrel, one of them at home. In, in order for a rain barrel to work, you have to get it up high. And mine's only two concrete blocks high. And I wanted you to take a look and see how it's kind of put together. Um, the chain is on there because sometimes my rain barrel's empty and um, sorry if I just take my rain barrel because it's really not connected to anything. But I did have to cut my downspout. And if you look really, really close, you can see they sell those teeny tiny screws at the hardware store. Um, oh, at the hardware store to help um, your downspout. Oh, let me turn the volume. I didn't have the volume. Um, in the winter time, you do have to winterize your rain barrel. And yes, I know, righty, um, righty, tidy, lefty, loosey. Um, but I did finally figure it out. So in the winter time. You need to open your rain barrel and keep it open so ice won't grow, um, ice won't um, hurt your rain barrel. It is just plastic. It's super heavy duty plastic, but it is possible that that, that ice could bust your rain barrel or bust the spigot. Um, on my other rain barrel, I had a dual system set up and I really had to get creative on my downspout because I didn't want it in the backyard. Um, so I had to get one of those doodads that went around. Um, and I do have to watch it and make sure it doesn't get leaves stuck in those little accordion pieces. This is how your rain barrels come to us. When you get it, you gotta put that, there is no downspout in there. It comes with the downspout, it comes with everything for you to set it up. But you got to crawl in there and put that, um, I mean, not a downspout, a spigot. You got to put that spigot in there. When, boy, that was fast. When you get your, let me start that again. When you get your composter, sorry, watch your eyeballs, people. It comes in a stack and um, it 
it comes in a second. It's kind of, um, you do have to put them together. Just like in the beginning, you got to put those arrows together. If you don't put the arrows together, it's not going to fit right. Um, let's see. Oops, skip one. So this is what we have here at solid waste. We have the earth machine compost bin and all the accessories that you might need. The aerator, the kitchen composter, the um, the pest bar. What else do we have? Is that it? Um, we have a nice little wheel that's a guide, and we do have that fifty-five gallon cistern um, that is super nice, and it comes with everything that you need. Um, and it's really easy to set up. Um, all you have to do is just cut your downspout, make sure the downspout is somewhere close to that little uh, shallow funnel so the water runs in it. Um, and just put the old elbow back on there. Make sure that all the parts that you're sticking back up there are on the outside. If you put it on the inside, water is going to gush out. So they go on the outside. Um, and you can use that water all summer long so long as it rains. We, we were, did pretty good this year and we had lots of rain. They're full right now, I can tell you. Um, and um, what was I gonna say? It has, if it fills up too much, it has that overflow um, tube that takes the water away. All right, good heavens. I haven't talked for 50 minutes in forever. Um, I did put the um, link. I sent a chat to everyone. Um, there's a link to our composting web page. And on that page, it says um, order here. If you want to purchase any of the things that we have, we basically bought them uh, cheaper because we bought a truckload of all the materials and then um, we just sell them at cost. There's no yes. uh, profit to be made. So if you don't, you know, it doesn't hurt our feelings if you find a product somewhere else uh, that you like better, but we do have those available and the order form just lets us know that you plan to come and we do um, require, uh, we don't have um, like online purchasing. So you, you would just pick your date that you want to come by and pick up your stuff and bring a check with you uh, or a money order if you had to, but, um, but that's the, that's the method to get the, uh, the the items if you choose to buy and we're always here to answer questions. Maybe if you've already been composting or using a rain barrel and you have any questions, that's fine. Um, so um, we're available right now if you want to type in anything in the chat or in the Q&A um, or on our web page, probably a contact form as well. Like Miss Carrie said, you don't have to purchase what we have at all. If you purchase a composter like that real fancy one for four hundred dollars, it's beautiful. It does a whole bunch of stuff, and more power to you if you want a four hundred dollar rain barrel. And if you want a composter that's a biodigester that can um, use that where you can put meat and bones in more power to you but that composter is like three hundred dollars so it just is there is such a range um of ways to recycle your food waste and um i i urge you all just to do a little bit of research to see what system is best for you it's all different like miss karen's chickens really love their compost And um, the Let's earth see. machine is, is lots of people have the earth machine. Lots of people sell it. And, um, so just as all over the place, they're nice because they last a while and um, they're pretty strong. And I like them because they're that black plastic and they really can generate a lot of heat for those microorganisms. I'm so sorry. Someone uh, someone put in a question. I have a sump pump that is pumping out a spring out of my basement. Oh, no. uh, based on the fact it is pumped out of the basement, it would be going up 
hill, but that shouldn't be an issue, should it? Um, I'm not sure if you're saying, I don't know how it works. My sump pump, I mean, it definitely puts water out through a pipe, um, goes away from my house. Um, but sump pumps, of course, are electric. So long as so. Right. So long as your sump isn't connected to your wastewater, um, like your, your dishwasher or your clothes washer, um, so long as your sump pump is just the drainage water from around your foundation, um, it's going to be fine. The birds yeah. might birds I mean, love the water. I think it would be hard to attach it to a rain barrel, though, just because those that water goes down. on top of a rain barrel. So right, I don't think your sump has enough power to pump um, pump that water up any higher than what your pipe pumps up. I think it's just too. Yeah, two and a half feet. Yeah, that so might in be order to get it into a rain barrel, it would have to be really powerful. But if you if you can use that water for um, your garden or for anything else, I don't think it's going to hurt anything. I wouldn't drink it, but um, that gray water, I think, is just as good for your garden and your plants. Any more? Okay, well, I don't, there have been no other questions coming through. Thanks everyone that joined us and um, let's see, hopefully we'll keep watching for a minute, but we'll go ahead and, um, and close this out. If you, um, you know, we're around the office here, if you ever uh, have any questions or, or want to purchase one of the rain barrels or compost bins. Thanks everybody for coming by and listening. Um, hold on. Let's see. I don't know if Tammy is still on here. I saw your question. There was a part on the website that was um, had an old link and I just edited that.